Hi, I'm Nana and I met most of the Poets Passport crew in Speak, which was a debate club that I started in Limcott Wing in 2009. I met Heather, Tato and Morale in the club, uh, but the club was short-lived and then I went to join Poets Passport. Heather was, um, I think it was the first weeks uh, that, I, that I was in Malaysia. I saw them in KRC, Knowledge and Research Center, and they were having this debate session. And I went in there and talked to them and they invited me for the next session and they got my email address to inform me, but they never got back to me. That was, that was the first time. It was Heather and Nana. They probably don't remember me. Poets passed, but how it started. Um, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. The word came to His own, but His own did not recognize Him. That's got nothing to do with today's stuff. But anyways, um, how, how it all started was when I came to Malaysia, um, before this, um, I was very much into poetry. And when I came to Malaysia, I realized that there was no place to do poetry, but I was looking for an outlet for my poetry. And so I kept on meeting with a lot of my friends and um, when I shared with them my ideas about poetry and about wanting to have some place where we can recite poetry, I kept on finding out that more and more of them were poets. So then I began to realize that um, when I talk about poetry, I find poets and then uh, poets just seem to gather around poetry. So um, I spoke to the first few guys and when we first started it was, um, I think it was Mo. Uh, it was Mo, it was Rachel, it was... Uh, Denise. We were taking a walk and I was taking her to her house and I was telling her, you know, I have all these poems, I have all this poetry that I, I write but I don't have a place to, you know, recite it and everything. And then we sat down she's like, then why don't we start a, a poetry type of thing? And I'm like, then it has to have good food. You know, because <laughs> I really love a place that has good food. And then I was like, okay. And then on top of that, the ambience should be really intimate because poetry is something that is like very dear to people's hearts. So we had that and we talked about it. We talked about it. And then she thought about ambience. Um, this girl called Teppi. And then she's like really good with ambience and everything. She asked her to come for a meeting and she asked. Um, who else? I think it might have been Grace as well, but I don't remember too well. Um, and then it was a friend of mine called Fedia, and then uh, another girl called Nell as well. But she came in a bit later, so this was during my first year here. And so we tried to start this, but it was very fledgling, very small. And so, you know, we all just met together, and then we read our stuff, and then, you know, we sort of talked about it a bit, and then we went home. We went on and off for a while trying to do it, but it wasn't, it obviously wasn't getting to where it needs to go. So I think at some point I decided to just stop doing it because I moved out of the place where we used to do poetry together. And I was trying to figure out new ways of um, having a poetry item that can bring all these poetry people together that I find all around me. But um, I couldn't, and so I, I kept quiet about it for a while. 
Ain't it funny how no one actually wants to be alone? Yet so many in this whole damn world are sing single. And that's a signal that falling in love ain't so simple. With so many ideas of what love is thrust upon people. To television, let me tell you the vision. We sit back, accept an idea quietly in submission. Make sense of it, add it to our belief system. Then we edit our reality based on that wisdom. So everything else I perceive is received through the filtration of this idea of accepting as truth to me. All I ever wanted was to be happy. That's all I ever wanted. But I miss the warnings like those who miss out on global warming. So like I'll go, I encore the song to warn anybody who's too hardcore on the facts that happiness exists outside one, one's core. So much pain in the pursuit of happiness. What the hell for? I'm tired. Truthfully, I'm exhausted. I've done tried every trick, gimmick, even be honest. A human being who's harnessed the art of failure. A graduated master in it with both degrees and honors. So I can't calm this rage in the subconscious. I have an anger that makes the incredible hulk look like it's harmless. Plus my childhood innocence, that inside the hardness. And I can't go to church to see if my heart's hardened. And then we also joined the debate team at school. So when we were still talking about it with Mo, he, that's when he mentioned about Tato. It's Habele. And I'm like, pass that number, you know. Let me call this dude up and see what's going to happen. Out of nowhere. I receive a call and I'm in church, you know, here I am in church, me, I'm trying to get my worship on and everything. I get called by this girl, but she's obviously with a friend because it sounds like two people on the phone and they're very, very excited, you know, it's like, um, thought that crossed my mind was like, uh, if you take um, the Rugrats and then you give them uh, cotton candy the whole day, you know, and then you give, me, give them the phone, they gotta make a phone call. It felt a lot like that. And he's like, hi, who's this? And I'm like, it's Tato. He's like, no, man, I'm serious. Who's this? And I'm like, it's Tato. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm not here for jokes, man. Who's this? I'm like, it's Tato. <laughs> and then I figured, oh, her name's Tato. My name's Tato. That's cool. We could do with that. And um, like, we want to start a poetry thing. Mo told us about you and we're really interested. I was like, oh, really? Then let's get down on this. So he came over and Denise was there and we drew up a plan and we were all broke. <laughs> Um, it was very awkward for the first three minutes for me at least because I was like, eh, I'm in a strange girl's house with another strange girl that's rolling cigarettes like a pro. I mean, how do I know this isn't even weed? So, I'm sitting there and I'm uh, chilling with them, but then I don't know what happens. Out of nowhere, before I know it, it feels like I've known these guys for all my life and we're chatting and I even sleep over that night at her place. Like I was just, I was there like the whole night. We were talking, chatting about everything as if we were trying to catch up on the time we spent not knowing each other. So we had to depend on our lines, which didn't come the day of the event and we had to postpone it. And then the second time, like Tato was like, we're not postponing it again, so we have to find that money. We called another one of our friends as well, a girl called Tepi. It was um, Heather and Denise's friend, of course she became my friend. And uh, we called her in to help us. She came to my, she came and then we had it at my house. Back then I was living in a very nice house, nothing like this, eh? it was really good. It was an expensive looking place, it looked amazing, it was in Cyber Heights. So it felt very bourgeois, you know? It was a type of place, you know, you roll into, you feel like, eh, there must be money dropping in this place. So it was really cool. And so we organized the ambience and everything and we had our first session and we had about 18 people for the first session. It was really great. Uh, the first session had like 18 people and then putting crew aside. We had bought the food, purchased the money and everything and it was really good. And so people came and it was just a bunch of people that we invited and they didn't know what to expect. And honestly, we didn't know what to expect, you know? Now the theme of a poem this season is peace, love, and poetry. We come from a world of conflict. We experience, experience conflicts every day. We come from a world of hate and evil. We experience hate and evil almost every day. We are from a world of broken languages, bad languages, and broken Englishes. The cans and cannot You don't understand them deep. That was double meaning. I broke my English saying broken English. It's a film. 
I'm high, so I'm on point, right? <laughs> so what we're trying to bring together this time around is peace. For those of you who experience conflict, love. For those of you who've experienced hate and poetry. For those of you who hate shallowness. Tata, you want to start this? What I remember from that event was getting a call from Heather saying, hey, we're having a poetry session. Do come along, we're cooking, it's gonna be fun. It was really cool, the first one. It was a bit like, it was a late, it was really late because they were still cooking when we reached. I, I came in late and I found everybody just cooking. It was just a whole lot of chaos. And then 10, 20 minutes later, all of a sudden it's just cool. They were, they, it was such good food. It tasted so good. It was worth it. I think it started at like 11. Like that's how late it started. And then... Um, there were quite a few people there. Because when a person is, is, is invited for free food and they has the added bonus of listening to good poetry, who can refuse such an offer, you know? But it was really cool for me because I had not done anything of that kind in Malaysia. And there were, and I didn't know anyone else who did that kind of stuff or anything. Just cult, I guess cultural, if you can call it art, the creative art kind of thing. We started off with the poetry stuff, and we started sharing, spit, uh, spitting. You know, I started, I started off first, so we can, you know, break the ice, because I don't mind being laughed at if my poetry's whack. Roots, real trees have roots, but we, we smoke the leaves. You see now. My roots travel deep in the soils of time to a situation without contraception that led to my conception. Surprise! You have been inseminated, but thank God she didn't terminate it. Because real people have roots, and real trees have roots. But we, we smoke the roots. You see, my roots were fertilized and neglected by a single mom and a part-time dad. But you see, thank God, TV found me and cradled me in its arms, and I suckled off a screen till I found myself speaking like my parents in patterns of learned thoughts from porn to cartoons to hip-hop tunes. Man, I was a wild fig and poop. But that's okay, because those are my roots. And real people have them. Trees have them too. But we, we smoke the leaves. You see, and sometimes our roots go deeper than we think. And when, and when the roots go deeper, the uphill battle seems steeper. And the father's demons desire to devour the son too. You see, maybe one day your father's diabetes might come for you too. And times it's even more diabolical when the sins of the father find you too. You see, though I'm found, I'm, I'm unashamed because real people have roots. Real trees have roots, but we, we smoke the leaves. And so it was really nice to just be in a new environment with different people and um, to meet new people also, make friends, make friends with all the people that are my, my friends now, like my main friend, one of my main friends. After that, everybody was so excited about it. Um, they went home and they told their friends about it. And then the next session we had was also at my house. But this time, instead of 18, we had like 30-something people, 20-something people. I don't even remember the number. All I know is that my house couldn't handle it. Yeah, I remember. I remember. And it was... Forget chains, hooks, and hinges. That thing was out of this world more than little Wayne could ever be. And then, for the third session, we decided we want to take it to a, a bit of a bigger venue. And this was when the studio was just coming out. Um, so we went to the studio, we asked for the space and we got the space and over 74 people came. The place was packed and everybody was there, everybody was reciting and it was all these guys. But the thing about it was um, everybody had heard about it and they wanted to come see what these so-called poets are doing. And so everybody came and what was on their mind was instead of um, let's go share poetry was let's go see what these guys think they're doing. Yeah? Let's go see what they're doing. I wasn't in Cyberjaya. So the whole hustle of going there from my house and then I didn't even know Tato's name. <laughs> Somebody told me his name is Rahman. <laughs> so imagine and he's on the phone. I'm on the way. It's Tato. I'm like, who's Tato? <laughs> but yeah, but then I got there and I didn't know anyone except some few people. Tato <laughs> and Zelani was the one who invited me. I invited her very randomly. In fact, it was not, it wasn't, I didn't exactly invite her. It was me and Tato were talking about it. And then she's like, she's like, what are you guys talking about? And then I said, 
I think Tato was first actually said you should come and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When I got back home, my housemate asked me, how was it? I kept quiet. Um, of course, as you realize, poetry is not necessarily for everyone. Not everybody's going to like poetry. So a lot of them actually didn't like poetry. They, they enjoyed what they heard and they loved the entertainment, it was really good, but uh, it wasn't their thing. So a lot of them went back. But at the same time as well, a lot of people at that point decided this was what they wanted and they want to stay with us and they want to enjoy this with us. And um, this was the time after that when we started moving around houses. So we had um, Nzilani come in by then after we had Nzilani come in. And Nzilani has been an amazing asset to us. Eh? She's incredible. And we also, by that time, we had Thogori as well. Thogori who was incredible with money. I mean, you can't count this chick out money wise. She was amazing. And then we had, um, who else did we have? This was, uh, this was when Andrew first surfaced as well. Poetry, poetry. I need to be a poet tree. Nature me, walk to me. Plow the ground surrounding me. Poetry, poetry. I beg from you the talent to weave words together, put syllables in alignment. Poetry, let me be tall, green, and vibrant, one with my roots, able to think without confinement. Poetry, let my tears be ink upon the page. Let my branches be pens and let the writing now engage. Release me from the gibberish that is my cage. May my words make sense. May contentment be my wage. I'll call you back, okay? Stop. Andrew. <laughs> Andrew, we told him about Poets Class, but he offered a bottle of wine first. And then he was Kenyan, and I've never met him, so I was like, this is Kenyan. I was happy. <laughs> Because at the time we were serving wine shandy, so we were mixing wine and uh, Sprite and all that stuff. And he went up and he said a poem, and it was such an amazing poem, very short. Like, you know, usually, like, his, his poems are huge poems, but his poem was like, I don't know, it was very short. And I was like, wow, how did this guy say so much? And he was so shy, it was so weird, he was so shy. He was so quiet, he had no poem, he had nothing. He just came and said, Heather, I have nothing. All I can offer is like a bottle of wine or something. And I'm like, it's fine, just sit down and enjoy. Andrew was wearing that red hat of him and I was like, wow, that is something. And then, <laughs> during the course of the night, um, while he was drinking that wine shandy, he regained his confidence. <laughs> If I should put it that way. <laughs> and he wrote, he, Bakijani. This is why we call it Bakijani. So I went and I talked to him. And, no, I told him that I liked his poem. And then he was all shy. And, and, like, uh, and he was so quiet. He was just in the shadows. And um, uh, But that, then that was the first time I met him. Ladies and gentlemen, my housemates. Thank you so much for coming. It's so beautiful. As you know, this is like one, two, three, the fourth poet's passwords. And for these three, we had three consistent, beautiful ladies who have gone. One has graduated. She sends her love to all of you. The glory with the tea. <laughs> Another one is Denise. You see her pictures. She says hi to all of you. Um, hopefully, we will have a video online, webcam to webcam, so they can also recite that pieces as well. Because we, as first class, we are a family. You graduate. Go home, you work, you have kids, we want to see those kids. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about friends, okay? <laughs> asked Louis, Louis, so you know this guy, can you ask him to come? And he was like, hey, I'll try. You know, this is kind of hard, he's a busy man. <laughs> So he's not coming, and he's like, no, he's not coming. And then after that, we kind of did try to help out and started paying from there, and um, where the, the the crew members didn't have to be the only ones who were 
um, paying for the session. We were getting more and more regular people. Even Kudzai was there at this time as well. In fact, Kudzai's first time coming to Port Spasburg was the time we had it in studio and he really wanted to be a part of it then and he was really excited and for the time that he was with us he was really good there. It reminds me of when we had people who didn't even write but then when they came to the sessions when they heard other people talk and recite they grabbed papers and pens and they actually wrote. So for the next couple of sessions what happened was we started getting more and more people oh, sorry not only started getting more people but we we kept on getting more people but because we had moved out of studio and we started doing it in people's houses we couldn't accommodate as many people as before so we actually had to start cutting it off at like um 45 because really as much as we wanted everybody to come the houses just couldn't handle it you couldn't even breathe it was so hot and people didn't have space to sit things would get destroyed and stuff like that so we didn't want poetry to be destroying stuff so. and yeah it was just too much, too many people in a very small room. People kept on paying, but then uh, the limit kind of made it a bit difficult for people as well. And then uh, on the day, uh, the last quiz, first quiz session, which was in the house, um, at my house, he came. And you know what he did? He dedicated a song to me. What? <laughs> I was melting. <laughs> he put me. <laughs> he put me in the middle. I have the videos. You have the videos. I should, you have to pass them to me. <laughs> That was the best gift ever to go home. It was amazing. Yeah, and then that's when we decided that we'll bring talent to Poets Pass, but it's not only going to be just about poetry, we'll also have um, other people who want to do musical, use musical instruments to express themselves, and it's cool. But you know the story, uh, you know how they, they, um, they started going to Krish's? Krish. Krish was, I don't know if I should call it a blessing or something, I don't understand. Because I had to leave for home, right? At the time, Heather was not around, right? So, um, it was also a time when a lot of, of the, 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 the crew members were very busy with school. My mom, Azine, Andrew and I went to, we, we came back from shopping or I think, I don't know where we were, we were in KL or I don't know, somewhere, and Azine took us, we wanted to eat in Cyberjaya, so we just randomly choose, chose Krish and sat there. And there was no one to cook. <laughs> Even the people I was training, they, they couldn't do it because they didn't know how to do it. So, And as we were sitting there and talking and eating, we found that the food is really good. And Andrew, and Andrew liked the, the, ma the manager guy because he came to us, he, he talked about his food. He you know, suggested some juice and some naan and stuff like that. Um, Mara and Becky Jenny were on that date. <laughs> and then they were like, oh, crash. And then they went and then they asked if we can use that space because they were, they had a vacant lot upstairs. So he just got this idea, oh, let's, let's talk, talk to him about Port's Passport. Maybe he can give us the place so that we can have the sessions here. And that reduced the entry fee from 25 ringgit all the way to 15 ringgit. He went and talked to him and the next week they talked to him with Tato. And then we, we got the space of Krish and it became our home. And we just moved on and that was the time when Jamal came. And uh, I think a couple of sessions after that, 
uh, that's when I came in uh, and I saw the beauty that is called passport and then and then and then that's how it's always been uh, up till now my sweet honey sweet when I be because when I be I be aggressive because that's my thing my words spread like but spread like butter on wings my lines are soft but hit with a sting because my punch lines have more hits than hits.fm acting like the radio from a.m. to p.m. reducing recycled rhetoric replacing broken records radiating mainstream media from his dot I am because my frequency is thought so I think therefore I am and then when I came, everything was just running smoothly. I had no way of complaining. I didn't have any reason to complain. I was actually happy that people are paying less. Because eventually what we wish for Poets Passport is for people to attend for free. These guys in KLA, and um, they were well, they're a bit old, so they were really excited to meet young people who were really interested in poetry, and they invited us to Singapore to go join to go be part of their lit up festival. Yes, and I remember the people. That's when I decided to move out of my little shell, you know, and explore what other people have to offer. Cool. And so after that whole poetry thing, I got. I was so inspired, I came back and I went right into the KL scene and I met different people from the KL scene and we had a slam and I won and it was, it was really cool. So what happened was, uh, the, after I won a slam in KL, um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, just before or just after Fato won a slam. And because I won that slam, um, Jamal, one of, arguably if you ask me, one of Malaysia's greatest poets, this guy is incredible. I mean, he could recite to me in Malay and still move me. That's how, that's how, that's how crazy this guy is. It's really cool. But he saw me at that uh, poetry slam and he took notice of me. And um, he got interested in us. There was this Merdeka event held at Matt KL. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, at that event, I was invited to read. I read. Um, that was where Heather, Mama Rosa, or Mama Poetry, uh, sort of like uh, saw me perform and uh, she found out what my name was and looked me up on Facebook and <coughs> internet and she found me and she added me as a friend. At this point in time apparently Heather had also seen his poetry and uh, was also interested in him because she'd heard him but I'd, I'd never heard the guy. So we had a conversation, we met up and then we talked. And uh, Tato got in touch with me and uh, said he would like me to come and attend Poets Passport. And I said, yeah, fine. And then, and when he invited me, it was like a very formal thing. He said, uh, we would like, uh, Poets Passport normally features a lot of poets from Cyberjaya, and mainly they are uh, foreign students. So if we can find uh, local poets to feature, that would be really nice. Uh, we have Manisha and we would like you to come. There's a lot of local people who attend it as well. So I said, yeah, why not? Eventually he came to one of the sessions, but that was like a, a little bit late on in the year. But after he came, well, he's still here. So you know how much he, how much he enjoyed it. Honestly, I thought that was like the first, the first time somebody that I don't know invited me for a gig. Um, uh, so it, it was kind of cool. So I said, yeah. And it's really great because then he's become like a crazy asset for us. You know, the guy is amazing. You know, he just, he's really inspiring. You know, it's like, um... So when I went there, um, I forgot what the theme was. And the atmosphere just blew me away. I've, I've never felt something so intense, so in my face, so raw, um, and yet so, so honest at the same time. Michael unsheathed his sword. It glistened in the early morning sun. He found form in the body of a dead man walking. His spirit long gone, gone about the time his conscience left him. A man of the law in a system of Babylonian justice. Laws dependent on context. Laws just his. The sword transformed into pistol. Sliced the breast three times awakening old star scars that gasped for vindicated breath. Third time we opened to bring death. 
two more slices through the head, this for good measure, certain that the cut will be deeply felt by another through the heart of a brother watching. A brain stops, a heart stops, aspiration stops, ambition stops. Breath takes a last longing glimpse, then leaves. Soul moves through one last time and departs, but hope does not stop. Dreams do not st stop, soul only departs as far as into the hearts of those who are now missing a piece of their own. Fills the gap and inspires once again, breathes once again, hope does not stop, dreams do not stop. Resheathing his sword, Michael escapes the body of the beast. Rising into the morning light, filling emptiness with mighty wings and powerful breathed words of how do you hold a moonbeam in your hand? How do you keep a star on dry land? How do you keep a star on dry land? This is as planned. God has requested that his son be returned to him. He shall now watch you the rest of your days as, as he sits at God's feet, the most lofty of seats. A soldier not fallen, but risen to a higher place. He was not one not made of this place, but of eternal steps that make no audible sound, sound as they do not fall on solid ground. They thunder immeasurable to you, earthly bound, and know you shall be together, you shall meet again. He waits with a feast ready for when you shall once again break bread. And Michael disappears as swiftly as he came. Thirty years of achievement take minutes to maim, leaving blood, confusion, disbelief. Later grief cut short by grave thieves, but also the possibility of change. Reminisce Steve Biko, Amadou Diallo, Jordan, this, James Nanga Karyuki Mwerui. By this warrior slain, be inspired for revolution, incite the system of brutality, evolution, invoke transformation, redeem the institution resolution, re-injustice solutions, keep the scale of two evils unbalanced, corruption feeds on silence, stop police violence. When Manisha came, this was when we knew that we really sort of making progress because I think she found us online and she decided, hey, why not come? Uh, actually, I bumped into uh, a friend's friend of mine who had mentioned something about a poetry session and uh, I actually have been looking for a poetry session for some time because I came here last year and I couldn't find any so when I heard something like poetry sessions I told my friend like you should go and go back go back and tell him uh, that I, I, I want to know more about this poetry session so that's what he did and uh, we managed to have a meeting and he told me about poets passport and I can go and check on Facebook oh. and so Manisha came and we met her and it was like this sweet lady with like this really really small but high pitched voice my goodness so we met her and i was like hey hey how you doing man it's cool to meet you you know what i mean wow how'd you find out about us and then she went there and she recited and i was like whoa and i contacted uh someone called manisha and i told her that i wanted to come and she said that she that I should wait for more information to be posted on the wall. That's how I saw the carpe diem. When all lights are off, dreams become torments of everything I fail to achieve. Everything I fail to achieve has turned me nocturnal. Sleeping at four, waking up at two, miss ten classes and ten assignments to do. Roller coaster of a life killing me as though each breath I take sends a shock to my heart stronger than the shot of tequila I'm supposed to take. Scratching off my skin as though desperately trying to prove to you that my present state must be fake. You. You who always seems to judge me, I ask you. Have you achieved perfection? And if so, show me. Or better yet, teach me. And I'm always very excited by it because, you know, different people come and they want to add something to it you know and, and in the end it's never really been about either me or Heather it's always been about um, the different people that come together and meet at Poets Pass but it's always been about them and I guess Heather and I are privileged in a sense because we've had the chance to see this from the beginning and all the way up until now. Um, Poets Passport, I wish you the best in the next decade and century to come because I know that you will last that long and I hope that more and more poets come and are inspired to um, write um, their feelings on paper and actually express them because uh, Poets Passport is a place where it's intimate enough for you to share your deepest secrets and you don't have to say them directly, you can sugarcoat them, you know what I'm saying? We don't really want to 
know everything, everything, but we want to know something. So um, I wish you the best. I wish you um, so much love, poetry, and so much peace. Our tenure here in Malaysia has been done, and we've done the best that we could. But we don't want poets past with Dan, so luckily you know, I was actually praying that God gives us somebody who can take over after we're gone. And then luckily we met Tulila, who's brand new, still has like four or five years here, and excited. She's deeply passionate about poetry and is an amazing poet. When we started Poets Pass for Sabajai, it was so quiet. And now Sabajai is buzzing. I think it's time that we helped out those who are in need. And that is the whole point of community. Tell me the history of Poets Pass for like you heard it or if you have never heard it, tell me how you think it started. Well, uh, for the title, gave me bits and bits and bits and here's how to give bits and bits and bits as a narrative. <laughs> okay, um, apparently, Poets Passport started from uh, small groups. Uh, we used to have uh, groups in homes uh, where maybe someone would volunteer, okay, we can have it at my place, kind of thing. And slowly, for sure, that's how it started. And then Heather apparently heard about Poets Passport. And then she contacted Tato. Okay, like come, let, like let's let's come together and see if we can make this bigger than it already is. Uh, so that's what they did. And I'm not exactly sure where Jamal came. <laughs> uh, they didn't really tell me that part of the story, but uh, I think that that's the part of the story. Yeah, that's the, that's how it began. Uh, yeah, they came together and voila.